Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 423. There's been an accident, but fortunately they were able to keep us alive in order to provide this show to you. Tonight we uh, welcome you as we celebrate Halloween. Halloween. Welcome to the show. Uh, tonight we are going to lose our heads over an amazing plugin for WordPress. It's going to let you manage all your WordPress sites, all of them, from one dashboard. Stick around. I'm going to be showing you that. What else is coming up, Sasha? I know we're going to be taking a little peek at some green screen technology. Ooh, do we have that? Well, we might be able to conjure something up, okay. I'd say. Hmm. Hmm. And also, here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Last week, we reported on Tesla's autonomous firm update firmware update and since that time some drivers say that their cars have tried to steer them off highways talk talk is playing down a huge cyber attack on their users confidential data walmart has applied to the faa to use drones for home delivery facebook is adding trillions of members posts to its search results and disney is launching its own video streaming service a la netflix in the uk and Raider Manchester Fire and Rescue Service has become the UK's first force to have access to drone support around the clock. Stick around. These details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. It's episode 423. We've got a great show planned for you. Although I'm feeling a little out of sorts. You are. I well, am. You're looking like a, well, a head on a, a head post. On a post. <laughs> a head on a post on a desk. Lord of the Rob. Flies. What has happened to you, Robbie? Well, I don't have much of a backstory, but it's <laughs> some, don't have much of a back. some kind of a crazy accident <laughs> occurred, and uh, they installed this thing for me just to kind of hold my head up. Otherwise, I would have just been floating around. But hey, here we are. It's going to be a Can fun you... show. Yes, it's going to be a rockin' show. Can we talk a little bit about our last, last show? show? Yes, we can. The That'll Back to cool. the Future. Back to the Future. We can All say that right. we're from the future, and this is how we exist in the future. Let's That's that. true. That would be a good backstory. So <laughs> let's go with that, folks. That's right. Yeah. We should have discussed this before the <laughs> We're live We're discussing show. it now. <laughs> What's with, our story? With you. You can help us decide. Uh, okay. Back okay. to the Future week. Uh, back so, to the Future day was last Wednesday. That's right. And it was kind of Back to the Future week all around the world. But That was probably my most favorite episode to film. Wasn't that fun? That was a ton so of fun. So much fun. Thank you to everybody for sending in your messages. And uh, I got a lot of email, a lot of comments. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, a couple of things that happened last week that uh, who could have known? For one, I was bang on with my theory about the Toyota Mirai. Yes, you were. Watch back to that episode, uh, Category 5, episode 422, where I talked about the future car from t Toyota. And right. this was a theory as of Tuesday when we, when we broadcast the show. And they now they actually announced a couple of days later, and, and it, because of time travel, we actually were were a few days ahead of them, right? In our prediction, and they announced that indeed the Toyota Mirai is basically powered by garbage, which is awesome. Ha. And you were so right. And so. my theory about hydrogen was exact. <laughs> How do you like that? It's like I'm just ahead. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. 
Uh, so that was kind of cool. And if you haven't seen the video of them announcing it, you absolutely have to see it. Doc Brown and Marty McFly are in it, and uh, they did they did a really fun kind of video with uh, with the actors, and it's would, it's definitely worth watching. I'll Get definitely. on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, check it out. Do Toyota, Back to the Future, something like that would would do just fine to find it. Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, Self lacing shoes. Self lacing shoes. They're a thing. They're a thing. Um, and we we know that they've been working on them. I I don't know if it's going to be a, a fad. I think it, I feel like it's going to be a fad. Like it it had to be brought out. Um, we'll take a look a little bit later yeah. because uh, one of our viewers actually sent us a link with uh, with a picture from uh, Michael J. Fox. So right. we'll take a look at that in a little bit as well. Hoverboards, real thing. Real thing. Kind of, sort of. And interesting to note that it doesn't actually necessarily need the the kind of installation that we had determined that it might. So that's ah. kind of cool, and uh, they there's all different kinds that are that are, that are being worked on. I looked at a video, uh, I found a video on YouTube uh, in a search for how the Hendo works, and one demonstration showed how they used uh, north and south polarized magnets oh. in a series spinning in order to create a magnetic field below the hoverboard. Oh. So it actually starts to make sense of you know how this thing is actually working. The the hoverboard itself to me sounds like the wraith are about to attack. That's what it sounds like. But that's the that's the thing spinning at uh, practically the speed of light mm. and causing that magnetic field to be created. So that's kind of cool. So that's a real thing. I no longer need a hoverboard. I'm not now just yeah. We hover- don't need hoverboards do not around need. here. We'd. Woo. Or self-lacing shoes, for that matter. <laughs> it's useless to us. It's true. There are some corrections. Wouldn't mind a self-lacing hat. Ooh, My yes. My head gets very cold, and I have, have- no hands to <laughs> warm them up, warm it up. Didn't think that through. So, <laughs> um, there we do some, have some corrections. Some corrections. What have I done? So, hmm, the most important, I would think, was the the four twenty nine p.m. Oh yeah, situation. Well, the Doc McF- uh yeah, Doc, Doc McFly, I almost <laughs> said. Doc Brown and Marty McFly, we said, arrived at 4.29 a.m. It was actually 4.29 p.m. Oh, Thank so- you to those who corrected us. I will say, you know me and my crazy... I'm unable to wrap my head around time changes, so... <laughs> yeah, so time like, travel? A.m., p.m., Just add that whatever. To the you know. Got some, uh, some nice angry comments from Cubs fans. Oh, can I read this, actually? Would you like to? Word for word? I would love to. Okay. Okay. This is one example from C128D. Yes, one example of many, many messages. C128D is going to set us straight. Okay. Right here, Here right now. Here we go, and I quote, The Cubs last won the World Series in 1908. That was not the last time they appeared in it. They played in and lost the series in 1910, 18, 29, 32, 35, 38, and 45. So I was way off. My guess is he Googled this. There's no way this would all be in his head. He's a Cubs fan. He knows this. Seven times since their last win because they're the lovable losers. It's a, always a good idea to check your facts prior to making such an erroneous and ludicrous statement like that. I am very disappointed in you, Robbie. Sorry, C128D. Sorry, community. Sorry, world. Yeah. It's no surprise that I know very little about sports. And when I try to look like I know what I'm talking about, I mess it up. I feel like I might have fed into that a little bit because I didn't know how many times they've made it to the World Series and lost. I just know how many times... Or when the last time they won it was. <laughs> that's that was the stat that I had. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I didn't I totally know anything. That up. I was more focused Thanks on the time at, on the Blue Jays, and if anybody we were, watched that game, yeah. you will know how unfocused we are about that. Now it's yep. sad. Yep. My, it's over. Oh, that, but the Cubs aren't making it either. So, <laughs> Midwest Moto Rider wants to be very clear on YouTube that they want nothing to do. With flying cars or hoverboards or any of those kinds of technologies. Even if they exist, they're dangerous. Autonomous vehicles, not for you. Wait until you hear the news. Because autonomous Uh vehicles are not for me either. Okay. Robbie, did you know Category 5.TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network? If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, which is cat5.tv slash IAIB. 
Nice. Yeah. Are you ready for it, folks? I'm ready. The floating heads are going to teach you a little bit of uh, information about how you can manage. <laughs> this is going to be great. We're going to do this amazing, you know, <laughs> hands on epi- epic, as the kids say. It's going to be an epic demonstration or a demonstration of epic proportions. Yes. Of how to manage an astronomical amount of WordPress blogs or websites. We're going to do this. And then it's going to get sent. It's going to go viral. (laughs) And people are going to wonder what is going on with these hosts. It appears to me um, on today's show, maybe our feature should have been hands-free technologies. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) <laughs> oh Shoot. boy bluetooth headsets we did not think of this yeah, using your eyes to control your computer <laughs> we could go back to that that was your first show wasn't it oh it was using your like, eyes to control the computer that would have been perfect tonight darn oh we'll have to go back and redo it watch that one go back and watch sasha's first episode and then you'll know okay tonight we're learning how to manage multiple wordpress sites blogs yes. Uh, from one dashboard. This is oh. exciting because um, a lot of times as, as a web administrator, if you are a web developer or designer, what happens? Well, you start administering several blogs, several websites powered by WordPress. Some of them start to fall kind of out of date. That right. can happen. Sometimes it's hard to keep up. Sometimes uh, uh, you miss a couple of updates on one website and or... Maybe you're really good and you never miss it, but it's a lot of work, boatload of work to have to log into each panel and go through and figure all that out. Yeah. Remember all the passwords because I know you're using strong passwords. Uh, so tonight we're going to install a program called Main WP, and uh, Main WP is quite a bit different than the other control software out there because one, it's open source, and two. You deploy it on your own server. There are no third-party servers in use here, folks. So you have control. Uh, You are in control of the security, and you're not sharing the information with a third-party service. So this is all you, my friends. Um, So this is uh, this is why we're looking at Main WP tonight. Uh, Main WP has everything, Sasha. Everything? You can, you can manage your site. You can manage your backups, the upgrades of all of your sites. Uh, you can publish new articles, new pages. Uh, you can create clones of existing WordPress installs. Oh, that's good. You can modify the privacy. And there are some really great tools built into it uh, to help you to establish a more uh, secure website as well. Lock okay. down the file system, for example, with permissions. Okay. So the key thing to keep in mind with main WP is that in order to use it, you have to use a fresh install of WordPress for the dashboard. So that's your administrator area. Okay. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to deploy uh, uh, an instance of WordPress specifically to manage all of our WordPress blogs. Okay, so there are two websites to keep in mind. There's WordPress.com, of course, Mm -hmm. WordPress.org. Okay. If we go to WordPress.com, it's really hard to type without fingers. (laughs) Yep. Seriously. This is why, even though my heart is with the chat room. We won't be able to talk to you quite as easily tonight. I have to nod and the computer responds. Okay, jumping over to WordPress.com, what do you see? Okay, create website, blah, blah, blah. It's a website to create a WordPress blog. Okay, well, that's not exactly what we want. What we want to do is we want to download WordPress. Well, if you go to WordPress.com, you're not going to be able to do that. And WordPress.com gives you uh, a hosted platform. So if you're looking to create a blog easily, this is a service. WordPress.com is the WordPress service. However, what we actually want to do is go to WordPress.org. WordPress.org, on the other hand, is the WordPress software. This is where you can, in fact, download WordPress. So let's do that. Click on there, and you'll see the download links over on the right-hand side. Now, I've already taken the liberty of downloading this simply to expedite our uh, feature tonight. So let's head on over to uh, 
zero two five. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> cool. All right. So what I've done is I have simply uploaded the WordPress downloaded files. I've unzipped it. So it comes to you as a zip file. And it looks like, let's bring it up on the screen here. So once I've extracted it, it looks like this. These are all the files for WordPress. So I've uploaded those to my server, and here we are loading it up in my browser. So now all I have to do is click on English for the language that I've chosen. I'm going with the United States. That's fine. And it says, okay, this is what I'm going to need, database name, database username, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm ready to start. So, uh, so let's do that. What? Okay. Just one moment here. Let's see. There. Okay. So the defaults that it brings up on the screen, there we go, are not what we need to do. So we actually need to change all this information for our WordPress install. So what we're in fact doing here is installing uh, the database end of WordPress. So I've set up a little sample database. So my database name is demo423 for episode 423. My username is WP demo423. My password, which is ultra secret since. Yes, very secret. Since uh, obviously it hides it. So if you have somebody looking over your shoulder, for example, you'll want to hide that. There you go. Okay, and database host. I need to set up my, and usually that would be my uh, local host. In my case, I'm going to use my sql.demo.cat5.tv because my SQL, uh, my MySQL server is on a different host. And then submit. Table prefix is okay to leave as is. Alrighty, Sparky. Looks like we're good. Run the install. Let's see if it goes. And it took. So because yeah. I didn't get any errors, I know that we have successfully installed WordPress. Yes. Okay, so let's do this. Site title. Uh, I can call this whatever I want. Management dashboard. Remember, I'm not actually setting up a blog. I'm setting up a dashboard to use in order to administer all of my websites, all of my blogs. Username. Enter whatever you want there. I'll probably just go with the same because this is just a demonstration. Uh, WP demo. Four two three, and my password. That's a better password, eh? All right. Oh, that's a great that's password. That's a great password. I was Can gonna. I, I was my... gonna suggest that one actually. Yeah, that's the one. Let's just change it to my very weak password. There we go. Of course, you want to use a, a very strong password. What I'm doing here is strictly for demonstration purposes, and will be changed following the show. Okay, confirm use of weak password. Don't ever do that, okay, folks? <laughs> Let's use a strong password. That's not the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, okay, so my email address, live at category5.tv. Allow search engines to index this site. We say no. Turn that off because we certainly don't want our administration system to be publicly indexed. This is strictly for us to administer. Install WordPress. Let's go. Shouldn't take long. Okay, log in says successful, so that means it had no problem connecting to our database and so on. I like their sense of humor. Do you? Yes. Were you expecting more steps? Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy. Nice. All right. Let's see if it comes up. Looks like we're, I had a bit of an internet issue there, but that's okay. If I refresh, maybe I get it. Let's try Ooh. logging in. <laughs> Okay, so my login, WP demo, four, two, three. Login. Let's see. There we go. There. Okay, so I'm in. So now what I have is a 100% empty blog install. It's right. not got anything in it. And that is the state that we want to be in to deploy main WP. And that is going to, that means that we, we have no plugins that are conflicting. We have no issues with that. So we want to secure this. I'd probably install something like WordFence um, to make sure that you have uh, some security on your login form 
that's always a good idea. Uh, if someone does try to hack in, uh, you want to know about it and you want to block their IP addresses. Uh, WordFence is going to do that for you. And that, again, that also is outside of the scope of tonight's demonstration. So take the, dem uh, take the uh, suggestion and, uh, and go with that. We have shown how to install WordFence and how to use we WordFest have. in the past. Yes. So. I was on that episode, too. Wonderful. Yeah. That's right. So, so Google it. Yeah, check it Google out. Google it on the Category 5 machine. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. So now, let's jump right into uh, installing our plugins. So, plugins, add new. Mm -hmm. And now over, let's see, search plugins because I've already chosen add new, right? Right. So I'm going to type main WP, just like it sounds, just like that. Just okay. like that. And hit enter. And there we go. We've got main WP dashboard and main WP child. Those are the first two that come up. We are not going to install the child plugin. That's for our websites that we're going to be managing. What we're doing here is installing the dashboard. So let's install this now. So just to, um, to clarify, with MainWP, this is a freely available plugin. It's open source. You can install it, deploy it on your system. There's no charge for that. Where they make their money is essentially if you want to enhance the plugin, there are some commercial plugins, of, uh, features, uh, add-ons, and things like that that you can purchase separately. And okay. that's a wonderful thing. So you may find that, hey, I want to enhance this, uh, this program with these plugins, and that's available to you, but it is optional. Mm -hmm. Okay, jumping back here. It's already done installing. I can go activate plugin. This is really simple. It's really straightforward. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to show you this tonight so that you could see, you know what? This is entirely worth your time. It's a great time to drink coffee when we're not on the screen because it's weird when our coffee mugs just float <laughs> up to our mouths. This is the funniest episode. And can I just say you've said oh. head on over a couple of times. Do, have and I said that? you've also said check over your shoulder, which you don't own. You don't have shoulders. You have no shoulders. I have no shoulders, folks. Yes, and I keep meaning. To I like that, that you're catching all this. I know, I love it. <laughs> I hope you've been catching it. And I just pointed at you with my invisible, invisible hands. hands. I literally have invisible hands. I'm just saying. I know, it's so crazy. Can I do that too? Look. Okay. Oh. Not there. Ah. Okay. All right. Back okay. to the show. Sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll show you this stuff later, <laughs> the tech behind all this. Okay, so uh, moving on here with our deployment of main WP. Notice what it's saying. Stop! Before you continue... We highly recommend a new WordPress install for your main dashboard. Okay, so we've already done that, so we have read the warning and we want to proceed. It's important that you do that. Don't install your dashboard on a pre-existing WordPress install. We right. want to have this clean deployment of WordPress. Notice that we've done that in only 20 minutes. We've already deployed WordPress. We've already installed it, activated the database, set it up, and deployed the main WP dashboard software. And this is no Halloween trickery. This is done in real time. This is not the magic of TV. Yes. This is. <laughs> but this install is easy peasy. That's it. All right, so jumping over here, add a single site. We are ready already. What? That's nuts. We need child plugins. That's all it's waiting for. Our dashboard is ready to go. It's waiting for us to add a site. So let's do it. What do you say? Okay. So child child plugins would be like my site. Is that what you Your website if I wanted to administer your website for example? Then I would be yes, yeah, so I would I be could the child. Add it. Yes. Ah, that's right. Yeah. Nice. Okay. okay. That makes sense. So all of the websites that we're going to administer are called the children. The children. Yeah. And this, I guess, is the parent, is that right? My children, yeah. yes. So what, what, what we need to do as far as timeline goes, so this is our methodology, our workflow, is that we want to deploy the dashboard as we've already done first. That's step one. And it's important that you do that because as soon as you activate the child process on any of your blogs, it is sitting there waiting to have a connection made. So theoretically, if you were to install that child process on a blog and activate it and not connect it to your dashboard, somebody else could mm -hmm. connect 
to that website and take over that website's administration. Right. Okay, so it's very important that you set up your dashboard first, get it to the point where it's, as ours is, waiting for that uh, child website. Okay? You like that. I do. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I am a child. Demo dot cat five dot tv slash remember zero seventeen when we deployed a uh, e-commerce store oh yes so what we're going to do is we're going to log into this and we're going to set it up as the site that we're going to manage so i'm going to log in the first time because i do need to activate the plugin okay and let's log in Oh, dear. I, oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Uh-oh. Houston. <laughs> we just have a little technical difficulty that we're, I'm going to resolve here for Sasha, if I may. You ready? Thank you. Okay. Be right back, folks. Okay. I'll just hang out here. I will uh, maybe talk about some questions and comments that have come in on YouTube recently. <laughs> as Robbie walks past it was like a ghost in front um, let's see I have Sompelflu who said male, pa- male pattern baldness is awesome um, and I have a comment what is that? male pattern baldness episode 103 he says male pattern baldness is awesome <laughs> This is hilarious. You cannot see Robbie walking everywhere. That was awesome. <laughs> you were a true ninja. I actually walked around the studio there without being seen, technically. But for the you fact You didn't see that, me walk behind no. her, for example. That was pretty neat. Okay, problem resolved. Her power cable on the laptop had fallen out and was about to die. That would be terrible. That would be horrible for the news, since I... Do not have it committed to memory. <laughs> like, news is in, so should, some stuff happened. Should we pick up where we left off? Sorry. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Let's pick up where we were. Um, looking, uh, so we've got, I've logged into our amazing store. This is demo.cat5.tv slash 017. This is an old install. You'll see one thing that I've left is it's an old version of WordPress. Mm-hmm. Hasn't been updated. This is intentional. There are several updates waiting to be updated, Mm -hmm. to be installed. Okay, so now I'm going to head on over to plugins. I'm not going to update it here. I'm going to go add new, again, for the sake of the demonstration, because you do want to keep your WordPress sites up to date. Search plugins. Again, that's main WP. And notice here, I'm not looking, I'm not on the website that's my dashboard. That's 025. Okay. See up at the top there? Right. I'm on our old install 017. Right. So here I'm installing the child process, the child plugin. Main WP child install okay. now. Okay. So now this is this is gonna blow your mind. This is so neat. Okay, activate the plugin. Okay. It's active. And this is giving you the same warning that I've already given you verbally that it's very important that you now connect to that site from your, uh, right. from your dashboard. For the moment, though, we're going to deactivate that child process. We're going to jump over to the newsroom, and after the news, we're going to pick up where we left off. I'm going to show you what it is to connect to that child process and how we can now administer that website along with all of our other WordPress websites. So if we can head over to the newsroom. Head on over here. (laughs) It's Tuesday, October 27th, 2015, and here are the stories we're covering this week. Last week, we reported on Tesla's autonomous firmware update, and since that time, some drivers say that their cars have tried to steer them off the highways. UK ISP Talk Talk was hacked, and user information has been stolen for upwards of 4 million users. They're talking it down, saying it's not as serious as initially thought, and we'll give you the details. Walmart wants you to deliver, Walmart wants to deliver to your door via drone. Facebook is adding trillions of member posts to its search results and showing results from people that you don't even know. 
Disney is launching its own video streaming service a la Netflix in the UK. And in other drone news, Manchester Fire Service is using drones to help them fight blazes. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. You've got mad skills. Now hone them. Learn new skills or improve your existing ones with online video tutorials and training from lynda.com through our special link at cat5.tv slash lynda. Learn software, technology, creative, and business skills you can use today to help you achieve your professional goals. Join today and start learning. We'll give you this chance to try it absolutely free with unlimited access to all of the courses. Sign up now for free, cat5.tv slash linda. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories from the Category5.tv newsroom. Tesla's latest feature is steering some drivers off the highway. Owners of Tesla cars that include the new autopilot feature, which allows the car's computer to steer, change lanes, and change speed automatically, have been expressing concern about their driving experiences since the update. One user who posted a Tesla in a Tesla forum wrote that a coworker with a Tesla car drove with the autopilot feature on, but the car would repeatedly malfunction. The person added that the car was going down the highway um, at approximately 65 miles per hour when the autopilot feature caused the vehicle to try and exit at every potential exit when driving in the right lane, even if that lane wasn't the exit lane. Tesla reiterated CEO Elon Musk's previous sentiment with this statement. The latest autopilot release is a hands-on experience to give drivers more confidence behind the wheel, increase their safety on the road, and make highway driving more enjoyable. We expect drivers to keep their hands on the wheel when using auto steer and maintain responsibility for their car. Over time, there will not be a need for drivers to keep their hands on the wheel. However, in the short term, it is very important that the driver stay fully engaged. While the feature is currently approved for North America, it may hit the roads elsewhere soon too. Um, Robbie, I have seen a couple of videos that people have posted of their cars actually steering them off the road or or plummeting or through... um, those cones and things really i I just think hands-free driving (laughs) except for me which would be super ideal at this moment is a bad idea what are you doing i'm looking up up at you oh oh funny (laughs) anyhow this whole tesla autopilot thing i like the cop out though it's all it's all your fault if you run off the road well here's the thing it's really hard for drivers in general to stay fully engaged even when autopilot isn't on so to ask somebody that to tell somebody that they don't really need to do anything but to stay like actively engaged in driving in case they're needed might be a bit much to ask Mm. all right UK internet service and phone provider talk talk has sought to calm customers following a devastating cyber attack on its system, stating that the hack was not as bad as first thought. In an update, TalkTalk said that the amount of financial data stolen from its systems was lower than first expected, and that the attack was on its public-facing website and not its core systems. However, up to 4 million customers remain at risk, with experts calling on authorities to investigate as urgently as it would for a large-scale pers- or physical theft. Dido Harding, CEO of TalkTalk, Talk, said with an, in an interview with Sky News, the financial information that they have on its own is not enough for them to access your bank account. Most of the risk is from criminals who would seek to pose as bank staff calling staff in calls to unex, unsuspecting customers and fish for enough information to break into bank accounts. Right. Right. So they don't have enough on for them to access it but they probably have enough to sound convincingly like staff i think that is exactly what's happening sasha i know it's scary people are getting phone calls because they have your phone number they have your credit card last four digits yes right so it's so easy to get tricked by saying hi this is talk talk calling uh Mm -hmm. we need to fix up your hey you've been hacked right you've heard about the hack that happened 
well, we're proactively calling and making sure that all of our customers' data is safe, and uh, you need to confirm for us a couple, you know, little couple bits of things. information, and that's happening. Uh, it that just kinda, it's it so hurts. Easy. It hurts me because I am a little bit gullible. I am less gullible now that I have been on the show for so long. Okay, that's good. But but when somebody calls in sort of an authoritative tone, as they would, it's hard not to believe that they're there to help. I mean, yeah. you have to have that that little seed of skepticism. We like to think people are good natured, right? But there are people out there that just prey on the innocent. Talk Talk said that we cannot confirm that we do not. We can confirm, sorry, that we do not store complete credit card details on our website. Any credit card details that may have been accessed had a series of numbers hidden and therefore not usable for financial transactions. The Metropolitan Police Cybercrime Unit is continuing to investigate along with BAE's applied intelligence arm. Yesterday, a 15-year-old boy was arrested, arrested in Northern Ireland in connection with the attack. 15 years old. He has since been released on bail pending further investigation. TalkTalk Talk has said it will waive termination fees for customers wanting to end their contracts, but only if money has been stolen from them. TalkTalk Talk customers are urged to change any passwords for critical online accounts and carefully watch their bank accounts in case of unexpected activity. Wow. So, yeah, if you are with TalkTalk, Talk, please check your accounts. Please check your and change your passwords. Use as strong a password as you can. All right. Next, retail giant Walmart, which owns Asda in the UK, has applied for permission to test delivery drones in the US. The firm has asked the Federal Aviation Administration if it can begin testing flight testing for drones for home delivery, pickup, and warehouse tasks. Walmart is the world's largest retailer by revenue and follows in the steps of Amazon, which has already started testing drones for this purpose. So if you can't make it to Walmart to buy a new sheet set, <laughs> I guess, I don't know what you would buy from Walmart that you, that you would that need. That could be delivered by drone? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. look like you would have a huge, like you'd have to do 27 deliveries for the amount of stuff you usually buy at Walmart. <laughs> I guess it would be good for like prescriptions. I I don't I I have I'm eager to hear how this kind of thing goes because it's interesting and it's certainly the way technology can go but what would I get delivered that's small enough and and would I trust it? Do you remember the story about the hitchbot? The hitchhiking robot? Yeah, oh yeah. And how it got destroyed. Did it? I didn't yes. hear that. Oh, yes, it got destroyed. Oh. Okay, so this leads me to Walmart now, you know, unleashes a whole zoo of drones for delivery. And what if somebody is able to, like, net these drones somehow? Steal them out of the yeah. sky, right? Steal them or throw a stick at them? Right, or do one of those laser zap radio transmitter right. jam or something. things. Yeah. And now they've stolen your products that you've probably purchased with an online card is my mm. guess. Your product and also the drone. Who's responsible for that, Walmart? <laughs> this has been another episode of The Conspiracy Theory. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of conspiracies, <laughs> Facebook has indexed almost 2 trillion posts put on, this, on the site by its members to make it easier to find them. The change means that many older posts will now be added to results when pe people search for news or information. The move is being seen as part of Facebook's attempts to keep people on the site rather than go elsewhere to keep up to date with events. It said options were available for people that did not want their older posts to be more widely accessible. About 1.5 billion searches are carried out on Facebook every day. The changes that Facebook has introduced will mean members of the social network will now also see posts by strangers alongside those from news organizations and people closest to them. Currently, the expanded search results are only available to Facebook members in the U.S. So to clarify, if you search something in Facebook, if somebody else searches something in Facebook, one of your posts, even though you're not friends with them, could come up in the search results. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's more along the lines of what Twitter does, right? But yeah. Facebook people, I think, 
still have the delusion that it's private. Yes, most Facebookers um, would feel probably betrayed by the fact that people can just, well... But they can anyways, I know, they can technically. Do you think this could be a good wake-up call I hope people? so. You know what? I hope it's a good wake-up call for some parents who allow their children on Facebook, mm -hmm. right? Well, just assuming that only their friends can see anything. It's not right. true. Right, no. Yeah, no. now people searching can find anything. All right. All right. Disney. <laughs> Disney is... <laughs> Speaking of children this is targeted fun. things. Disney is launching its own subscription-based video streaming service in the UK. Disney Life will feature many of the company's films, books, and music, and television programs in a single app. However, films from its Star Wars and Marvel franchises will be absent at launch. The service will mount a challenge to rival services like Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, and Now TV. One analyst said content creators were beginning to compete with the traditional pay TV companies on whom they previously relied, saying content companies like HBO and Disney are realizing that old business models no longer make sense. They used to sell their programs to pay TV providers. Now in the digital era, they can have a direct relationship with the consumer. Disney said that its new service would give families instant access to hundreds of its films, songs, and books for a monthly fee of £9.99. That's actually a pretty good deal because Disney has a whole load of good content. All of their movies and their books, I like it. Do you think that it's, it's creating unnecessary services? Why don't they put their movies on Netflix? For free? Well, for perceptively, uh, people get paid for yeah. having their programming on Netflix, right? That's true. But although not, I will say, I will say that if you put your Disney movies on Netflix, and then your kids are on Netflix, yes, you have to. Versus if you have like Disney TV or whatever their app is, anything that the child searches, ten bucks a month though, and it's exclusively Disney. Oh no, 10, 20, ten, 20 bucks yeah, a month. Yeah, 10 pounds <laughs> per month. Yeah, I guess mm. it's that's excessive. It just seems to me like we're, we're okay, they're, they've just clued into something that has been true for five years, Correct. for one thing. And, mm -hmm. and now they're jumping on it as if it's, they're creating a new platform. It seems like it's not needed. It's, yeah, likely not needed. However, I'm sure that there are people out there who are going to be right into it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see spending the money on it. I wouldn't personally, mm -hmm. but I don't have children. Mm. Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service has become the UK's first force to have access to drone support around the clock. This is cool drone news. That is cool. A team of trained operators have permission to fly the unmanned aircraft up to 400 feet or 102 meters above the ground and 500 meters or 1,640 feet away from the point where it's being controlled. The machine is already equipped with a camera that can see in the dark and will soon be fitted with a zoom lens to extend its capabilities. Other fire service have complained of privately owned drones hindering their efforts, but GMFRS's experience suggests the technology can also prove a boon to emergency responders. The drone is used to scout out locations and help coordinate crews on the ground. It features an infrared camera which help crews um, tackle blazes at night. I love this idea. Absolutely. Especially if you're in a situation where it's not safe for fire crews to enter a building, but you want to see sure. where the hot spots are, right? So and that you can yeah, position like yourself. you look at that image of the infrared mm -hmm. and think, okay, if that's the view that we have, I can see the hot spots a lot better than somebody from the ground. Yeah. How cool is that? Or even for emergency responders, if there is a. a catastrophic car crash up alongside yep. a highway and you can't quite get to mm. it in time right the the drone will let you know whether or not you need a medevac yeah what's what's ne what's needed exactly sure, okay. i like this a lot okay big thanks this week to sparkly balls roy w nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us if you found a news story you'd like to send email it to newsroom at category 5.tv for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the Category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. Thanks, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. www.category5.tv is where you'll find us. That is correct.
check us out. Ready to carry on? Where we carry on for the WordPress. All right, so let's jump back into it, folks. We are looking at a program, a plugin for WordPress called Main WP tonight. It allows us to administer all of our WordPress blogs, all of our WordPress sites from one individual dashboard login. This is some cool stuff, folks, so let's check it out. All right, I'm over here on my uh, my child website. We've discussed that just uh, a little earlier. I'm going to activate that main WP child process, and you'll see now if it's active, and if I jump back to my dashboard, I'm going to give this a site name. This is my friendly name that I want to use in order to identify this. I'm going to call this, for my case, it would be Demo17. You might say this is Sasha's blog or this is whatever I want to call it, and that's going to make it easier for me to uh, to remember when I click on it what it is. Demo.cat5.tv slash 017. Administrator username is Robbie. And groups, you can create some groups if you want. And there we go. I don't think we really need any of the other stuff. It's additional. Let's see what happens if I add. Add All new. Right. You have not set up your child processes. It's going. It's thinking, I think. There we go. Done. Okay. Did it take it? Yes. It connected. Yeah. And it says there are some updates. Eight available. It, we'll mention to them about the spelling error. But eight available updates. So that's pretty, pretty darn good. So it's all set up. Watch this. Okay. Open WP Admin. Notice I'm on 025, remember? Yes. Okay. See that? And there I am, now connected to that same panel, which I have open here, which I can now close. I can run my updates that way. If I want, it's cool because I can access it without having to use a password. But let's go back to my sites, and I can actually administer everything from within the dashboard without even having to use the WordPerfect, uh, WordPress, <laughs> WordPerfect, WordPress admin uh, on that website. I can do things like run backups if I've got that. I can sync and go through all the updates and anything that I need to do. So over here on the left-hand side, you see the available options. Go back to our dashboard is the first thing that, uh, that we want to see. This shows us a, an out-of-view glance of everything that's going on. You'll see that, for example, right now, we've got eight upgrades that are available. This is on one website that we have active uh, within our main WP deployment. Um, we can upgrade that website with just a single click, and that's all there is to it. That's excellent. So we can add as many websites as we like. We can. It's unlimited, right? Uh, I believe so. I've never hit a limit, um, so yeah. uh, I won't make that statement. But you can you can try it for yourself. I I believe it is. Um, and well, it, if you if you're testing that, you have too many children. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. All right, so that's Main WP. Check it out. It's available for you free, and you saw how we did it today, and I'd encourage you to give it a try. Again, it's open source. It's freely available, and because you deploy it on your own server, you are in control. You're not sharing that information with third-party services and having to worry about how they collect and use your data. It's your own, so that's pretty cool from an administrative standpoint. Super cool. Thanks for showing that. Thanks, everybody. Uh, what do you say we get into some little bit of uh, you know, Wirecast fun? Yeah. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Now, can, it, can we show the viewers what we actually look like right now? Do you really want to know? Yeah. I'm going to suck it in. <laughs> How funny is that? <laughs> so hilarious. <laughs> okay, so let's actually let's set up some shots. What do you say? Okay. Okay, so let's bring up, uh, this is Wirecast, and you can see that we've got our shot set up, and I've got my wide shot down here. This is the one that we're using uh, primarily, yes. and you'll see that I've got several layers set up. So let's, let's take this shot here okay. that is just us and show okay. you how Wirecast works with our uh, chroma key. So we've got a green screen behind us, as you can see. Uh, we're wearing chroma key suits, and what we've done is we've just kind of worn the, uh, we're not wearing mm -hmm. the face, um, just so that we are floating heads. Um, Sasha is, is not as broad-shouldered as me. Right. So what we've done is we draped a, a tablecloth, which is a green tablecloth, over her chair so that you wouldn't see her chair. I don't have that problem because you can't see the chair 
behind me. Right. Um, so in her case, we just threw that on and it keys just fine. So here in Wirecast, this is Telestream Wirecast. You can get it from cat5.tv slash Wirecast. Um, you highlight the chroma key, the camera. This is the the camera, and this is a D5100, a Nikon D5100. You can learn all about it uh, on the show show. We're working on a series that is going to teach you how to broadcast live using a Magewell capture card and a D5100 camera. It gives pretty good picture. So here, now I've highlighted that shot, and I can click on the little person in the right-hand side here oh, and yeah. go use chroma key, and you see what happens? Ha! It deletes anything that's green, but everything else stays the same. So then I can move that shot around. See how we do that? So I can so bring Sasha in. I can move that shot. That's done by holding in my Alt key. And here, for example, I've got my monitor in the, scre in the screen. So what I can do is I can use the cropping tool, and I can bring that in on the left mm. so that it deletes the monitor. And what I'm actually doing there, if I turn off the chroma key, you'll see it a little bit better. And it is nice to set up your shots with chroma key off so that you can see what's going on. I'm just bringing it in like that. So then when I key, you don't see that monitor. Right. This is a shadow on my neck, so I can adjust my collar a little bit. Or you can add more lighting as well for our uses tonight. We're not too concerned about the, the keying, right. how perfect it is, so to speak. So that's really all there is to, to setting up a shot. So let's look at the breakdown, Sasha, of this crazy shot that we've got set up for tonight's show and then we've got notice what happens here i'm going to show you on screen so here's our main shot i can actually zoom in on me just like that uh, we can zoom over to sasha and then we can zoom out again and there's a nice smooth transition as if there's somebody operating a camera now i've shown some demonstrations on how that works in wirecast but essentially what we've done is taken a shot with multiple layers you see that i've taken a picture of our uh, studio set. Let's, uh, sorry, I'll bring back up Wirecast so that you can see this. In this shot, I've taken a picture of our studio set before placing the green screen behind us, mm -hmm. and that gives you the, um, the view of the set. Sort of the illusion that the set's right there. Yes. So that is actually uh, fake as far as, it's the same stuff that's there, but, um, but it's virtual. Then we've added a desk uh, to give a nice uh, kind of futuristic looking desk. Uh, which is just a ping file. And then I've got a stand underneath of me that I've created from uh, just as a ping. And uh, then same thing with Sasha. And then we've got our two camera shots. Now you notice, now I've only got one camera, but I've created two camera shots. One for me, one for Sasha. And that gives me the chance to move us around individually, even right. though we only have one camera. So I've basically split the shot. So if I turn off chroma key on Sasha's layer, that's her layer. Okay. And you can see that my shoulder is in there, right? And over here for my layer, it looks like that. That's how I've cropped it. So that's cool. So then also I can do other little tricks. Like for example, I can create a new uh, media layer here and add yet another shot. And let's take chroma key, turn it on on that shot, and you'll see now there are two of each of us and they move simultaneously. And that gives you a little sense that so you can see how it works as far as um, uh, actually syncing multiple layers as if mm -hmm. they are several cameras. So you see I can move that around. I can scale it, move it around like that. <laughs> Creepy. Yeah, you know? So it's, <laughs> they work as layers. Mm -hmm. And you can see, now you'll also notice uh, in Telestream Wirecast, I'd love to show you this. Up at the very top right, you'll see up here our CPU usage is only about 34% right now, even though we're doing a whole lot of chroma key live, so we're doing a lot of stuff. Why That's is that? Cool. Why is it chroma key takes less CPU? It's, it doesn't. It takes a lot of power, but the difference, and this is all stuff we're going to be covering on the show show. So if this okay. is interest uh, of interest to you, this is going to be a fun uh, series for you. Uh, the show show TV. It's another broadcast that we have here at Category 5, and it's just started up. So there's one episode so far, and we're working on a series on how to do this kind of thing using DSLR. What happens, Sasha, is we're using a Magewell capture card. 
That's HDMI input. So you pay a fair penny for the card compared to a cheap capture device, but because everything is on board on the card, it's very low CPU usage. It's HDMI input, so you're not using USB and running up your CPU, and you get exceptional quality. So the, oh, okay. the card we're using tonight is a 4K capture card, but we're using it at 1080p. And uh, we're also going to be demonstrating a card that gives you four 1080p HDMI inputs on the show show. Cool. So it's very cool. So that reduces your CPU usage and makes things happen. So let's jump into, we've got time for a couple of real quick questions. Um, okay. Is that cool? Yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Yes, please. Can we change the background to be like space? Do you want to do that? Yeah. Sure. Is that so okay? Let's, yeah. Let's, uh, let's really quickly grab this scene here. Oh. And While you're doing that, I will pit, pull up the questions. Okay, so here I've got my face. I'm going to zoom out like that. Because we can do the questions from space. You know what I'm going to do? This is a nice feature of Wirecast. I can delete that shot. I might lose audio for just a second. Don't worry, I'm going to bring it back. Okay. Okay, so now I'm back because I've highlighted a shot with audio. Now I'm going to right-click and I'm going to duplicate a shot. So now oh, okay. I've created a duplicate of this so that it, it makes things a little easier. So this is the background that we want to get rid of. That's the desk that we want to get rid of so we can pull that. We can highlight our background shot and change that to an animated background or we can go add picture, which I like. And let's go to the folder where I have a couple of pictures. There we are. And I save everything kind of here. So here's a a picture of space. So I've just added that as an available picture. So there we go. So neat. See that? So now we've got a space scene in our background. Okay. And now let's get rid of our stands. Right. Because we're floating in space now. We're like a... We're planets. <laughs> we're pl look, there's the moon. I kind of look like one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the moon. So okay, so can I do viewer questions from you space? You want to do it from space? Is that okay? Is that, yeah. That's how quickly, and we're doing this live, folks. So now, of course, we're, we're floating in so space. So now can I move anywhere? Yeah, you can I move want. anywhere oh, now. That's, you don't have that's to. That's good. Yeah, okay. it's nice to be able to. Oh, uh, I will tell you, I've been sitting in very still the whole hour. Okay, so I have got a comment from Life of Pi. Hey, Life of Pi. Life of Pi says, hello, Robbie and friends. I would like to thank you for helping set up GPIO pins on Ubuntu Mate. Yeah. Everything is working great now. And I would also like to thank you for the encouragement to use LibreOffice for my home school. It's, it's working great as well. Thank Fantastic. you for all the help. Oh, Life good to hear. Pi. That is awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Buddy. A question from Whiskey Zero. Hey, Whiskey Zero. Oh, you know what? It's not a, que it's not a question from Whiskey oh, okay. Zero. It's a statement. A statement? Hey, Robbie, self-tying shoes arrived today. What's that? Self-tying shoes arrived today. Oh, so that right. Was... This is the one I was referring to, Whiskey yes, Zero. Yes, yeah. Whiskey Zero. So uh, actually uh, sent us a link. And yes. let, me, uh, let me bring that up here. Very cool. It actually uh, kind of arrived, and I think it was announced on Twitter or something like that. But let's, let's get a look yeah. here. And I'll post the links uh, in the uh, chat room as well as the, the logs for the show. Episode number 423 tonight. Yes. Let's bring it up for you. Da, da. This is taking us over to ABC News. Nice. And back to the future, self-tying the shoes. There it is. Marty McFly, a.k.a. Michael Fox. So cool. And there's the shoes. Cool. Like it. I'll Thank post, you. I'll post the link for you so that you can check that out, all right? Now, Back to space. Um, Shlo, Shlo, S H L O, hey, yeah. Shlo from Bermuda. So cool. Nice. I've been to Bermuda. Love I, ha it. I have not. However, I'm in That's space. Where we took our have you been Becca there? Oh, yeah, really? we're in space. Have you been in space? Have you been in space? Oh, and that wasn't that right now. How many years ago you would be in Bermuda? Right? Because you would have done your honeymoon right after your wedding after and, our wedding yes. and it was your anniversary it, like last we went week, in the february right? following yeah well we went in the february following our wedding so we were married october oh. 20th of 2001 gotcha. and so february of 2002 oh, okay so. we would have been in bermuda 
That's so cool. cool. Okay, so the question from Shlo is, what mapping software do you use to show our viewers you're watching from around the globe? Hey, Shlo. Okay, go Great to map.cat5.tv, and you're going to see our viewer location map. This is some pretty cool stuff because it shows you where people are watching Category 5 TV from at this very moment, and it's pretty cool. What software do we use? Well, it's obviously Google Maps at the base, and then we're using uh, jQuery and uh, some MySQL and some PHP in the back end that I've created. And what that does is every time someone clicks to watch a video, it simply runs what's called geolocation. And it's not down to your street address. It's literally kind of uh, down to, well, it's down to your nodes. So uh, for me, it might show me as it being in Barrie or maybe a city right. nearby. Uh, but that's all the information that we gather is just the location. And it's completely anonymous. So we place those in a log, uh, MySQL database, and then the map is generated in real time by placing pins on a Google map. And that's done using J query so um, that's all custom code so. i love that map i love every time we bring it up it, it is pretty cool to feel. see where everybody's watching from yeah. and we appreciate you guys and gals so very much Thank you so much. looking at the u.s the the coast there is just saturated with category five viewers and we love you and uh, appreciate you tuning in and then going overseas here check it out yeah. isn't that cool we that see is, you there. It's oh, incredible. I hear uh, somebody just said, go south. There you go, Uganda. Nice to see you. Zimbabwe, South Africa. We got viewers all over the world, even and this, Moritas. This show is very much run by you. Like your questions, your comments, everything. I mean, and your donations. Yeah, it's true. We do, <laughs> uh, we do solicit your, your contributions. If you get over to our website... Uh, and, and actually go over to donate.category5.tv. It's a fantastic way to support the show, and we really appreciate that. Uh, and, and we need it because we got bills to pay, and uh, mm -hmm. we hope that you enjoy and take away from from the show and, right. uh, and are able to we're hoping pitch to, in where you can. We're hoping to buy our bodies back, I guess, by next <laughs> week. People are buying toilet paper and shampoo on Amazon, and that helps us too. Thank you yes. for doing that. Uh, you can find our Amazon links and links to other uh, sites like eBay and Newegg mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, go to our partners uh, page on the website. Uh, go to theshowshow.tv. I'll promote that a little bit more tonight. And click on partners, and that will show you uh, everyone who is partnered with us right now and ways you can support us by purchasing through them. Christmas is coming. Christmas is on its way. There you go. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic week. I have no... I feel like I need to zoom out with no chroma. What's happening now? There we oh, go. there we go. There we go. Have a great week. <laughs> See you, folks. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.